डेट्स At the end of presentation, participants will be able to describe about the components of postnatal care and its importance. Now, what is postnatal care? WHO uh, stated that postnatal care is uh, defined as a care given to the mother and her newborn baby immediately after the birth of placenta and for the first six weeks of life. Majority of maternal and neonatal deaths occur during childbirth and the postpartum period. objectives of postnatal care uh, to prevent complications of postpartum period to provide care for the rapid restoration of the uh, mother to optimum health to check adequacy of the breastfeeding to provide family planning services to provide basic health education for mother and family essential routine uh, postnatal care for all mothers uh, assess and check for bleeding and check temperature Support breastfeeding, checking the breast, uh, prevent mastitis, manage anemia, promote nutrition and insecticide treatment, bed nets, uh, provide uh, provide counselling and range of options for family planning, uh, refer for complications such as bleeding, retain placenta, infection, postnatal depression, um, counsel on danger signs and home care. Danger signs for mother. excessive bleeding that is above 300 ml foul smelling vaginal discharge fever with or without chills severe abdominal pain excessive tiredness or breathlessness a uh, swollen hands feet and legs with severe headache or blurred vision a painful and gorged breast or sore cracked bleeding nipple uh there are multiple types of postpartum depression a uh, postpartum blues that is also referred to as baby blues postpartum anxiety postpartum obsessive compulsive disorder postpartum panic disorder postpartum post traumatic stress disorder and uh, a postpartum psychosis uh, this type shows the transition of motherhood involves significant cerebral and psychological transformations and the team work of health professionals who provide care during pregnancy childbirth and postpartum are required that includes midwives obstetrician pediatrician nurses and mental health professionals essential routine uh, postnatal care for all newborns assess for danger signs measure and record weight and uh, check temperature and feeding support optimal feeding practices particularly excess uh, exclusive uh, breastfeeding promote hygiene and skin um, eye and cord care if prophylactic eye care it is still effective until 12 hours after birth promote clean dry cord care identify superficial skin infection uh, such as pus draining from umbilicus more than 10 skin pustules and swelling redness hardness of skin and refer if the baby also has some uh, any of the danger signs ensure warmth after the first 24 hours practicing skin to skin care and putting a hat on the baby encourage and facilitate baby registration uh, refer for routine immunization counsel on danger signs and home care now what are danger signs for the baby convulsions of the baby movement only when stimulated or no movement even when stimulated uh, not feeding at all fast breathing more than 60 breath per minute a uh, grunting or severe chest and brain fever that is above 38 degrees centigrade a uh, low body temperature that is below 35.5 degrees centigrade very small baby that is less than uh, 1500 grams or uh, born more than 2 months early bleeding a uh, personal visits first contact if mother is in a facility She and her baby should be assessed within one hour of birth and again. 
before discharge. Uh, encouraging women to stay for 24 hours, especially after a complicated birth, should be considered. Um, if birth occurs at home, the first visit should target the crucial first 24 hours after birth. Follow-up contacts are recommended at least two to three days, six to seven days, and uh, at six weeks. Extra contact for the babies needing extra care, that is low birth weight uh, babies or those whose mothers have HIV, should have two or three visits in addition to routine visits. The WH recommendations on postnatal care. Uh, provision of postnatal care to mother and infants. First recommendation is um, timing of discharge from a healthy facility after birth. After an uncomplicated vaginal birth, birth in a health facility, healthy mothers and newborns should receive care in the facility for at least 24 hours after birth. Second recommendation is number and timing of postnatal contact. If the birth uh, is in a healthy facility, mothers and newborns should receive postnatal care in the facility for at least 24 hours after birth. If birth is at home, the first postnatal contact should be uh, as early as possible within 24 hours of birth. At least three additional postnatal contacts are recommended for all mothers and newborns on day three. Uh, between day uh, 7 to 14 after birth and 6 weeks after birth. Recommendation 3 is home visits for postnatal care. Home visits in the first uh, week after birth are recommended for care of the mother and newborn. Uh, recommendation 4 is assessment of the baby. The following signs should be assessed during each postnatal care contact and the newborn should be referred for further evaluation if any of the sign is present. Mm, stopped feeding well, history of convulsion, fast breathing, uh, severe chest in drawing, no spontaneous movement, fever that is more than 37.5 degrees centigrade, low body temperature, uh, any jaundice in the first 24 hours of life, or yellow palms and soles at any age. The family should be encouraged to seek healthy um, health care early if they identify any of the above dangerous signs in between postnatal care visits. Recommendation five is exclusive breastfeeding. All babies should be exclusively breastfed from birth until six months of age. Mothers should be counseled and provided support for exclusive breastfeeding at each postnatal contact. Recommendation six is cord care. Daily chlorhexidine, 7.1% chlorhexidine, dicluconate, aqueous solution or gel that is delivering a 4% chlorhexidine application to the umbilical cord stump during the first week of life is recommended for newborns who are born at home in settings with high neonatal mortality. 30 or more uh, neonatal deaths per thousand life births. Clean dry cord is recommended for newborns that are born in facilities uh, and at home with low neonatal mortality settings. Use of chlorhexidine in these situations may be considered only to replace application of a harmful traditional substance, such as cow down to the cord stone. Recommendation 7. Other postnatal care for the uh, newborn. Bathing should be delayed until 24 hours after birth. If this is not possible due to cultural reasons, bathing should be delayed for at least 6 hours. Appropriate clothing of the baby for ambient temperature is recommended. Uh, this means one to two layers of clothes uh, more than adults and use of hats and caps. The mother and baby should not be separated and should stay in the same room 24 hours a day. Communication and play with the newborn should be encouraged. Mm, immunization should be promoted as per existing WHO guidelines. Preterm and growth um, birth weight babies should be identified immediately after birth and should be provided special care as per existing WHO guidelines. Recommendation 8 is assessment of the mother. First 24 hours after birth, all postpartum women should have regular assessment of vaginal bleeding, uterine contractions, fundal height, temperature, a heart rate that is pulsed routinely during the first 24 hours starting from uh, the first hour after birth. Blood pressure should be measured shortly after birth if normal. The second blood pressure measurement should be taken within six hours. Uh, urine void should be documented within six hours. Uh, beyond 24 hours after birth, 
at each subsequent postnatal contact inquiries should continue to be made about general well being and assessment made regarding the following uh, uh, micturition and urinary incontinence bowel functions healing of any perineal wound headache fatigue back pain perineal pain perineal hygiene breast pain uterine tenderness and lochia breastfeeding progress should be assessed at each postnatal contact at each postnatal contact women should be asked about their emotional well being what family and social support they have and their uh, usual coping strategies for dealing with day to day matters all women and their families partners should be encouraged to tell their healthy uh, healthcare professionals about any change in the mood emotional state and behavior that are outside of the woman's normal pattern at 10 to 14 days after birth all women should be asked about the resolution of mild transitory postpartum depression if symptoms have not resolved the woman's psychological well-being should continue to be assessed for postnatal depression and if symptoms persist it should be evaluated women should be observed for any risk sign and symptoms of domestic abuse women should be told whom to contact for advice and management all women should be asked about the resumption of sexual uh, intercourse and possible dyspareunia as part of assessment of the overall well-being 2 uh, to 6 weeks after birth if there are any issues of concern of any postnatal contact the women should be managed or referred according to other specific who guidelines recommendation 9 is counseling all women should be given information about the physiological process of recovery after birth and that some of the health problems are common with advice to report any health concern to healthcare professional in particular signs and symptoms of tph sudden profuse blood loss or persistent increased blood loss faintness dizziness palpitations and tachycardia signs and symptoms of preeclampsia eclampsia headache accompanied by one or more of the symptoms of visual disturbances nausea vomiting epigastric hypochondriac pain feeling faint and convulsions in the first few days after birth signs and symptoms of infection fever shivering abdominal pain excessive urinary loss signs and symptoms of thromboembolism unilateral calf pain redness or swelling of the calves shortness of breath or chest pain women should be counseled on nutrition women should be counseled on hygiene especially the hand washing women should be counseling on birth spacing and family planning contraceptive options should be discussed the contraceptive uh, method should be provided if requested in malaria endemic areas mothers and babies should sleep under insecticide uh, impregnated bed nets all women should be encouraged to mobilize as soon as appropriate following uh, the birth they should be encouraged to take gentle exercise and make time to rest during the postnatal period recommendation 10 is iron and folic acid supplementation it should be provided for at least 3 months a uh, prophylactic antibiotics are recommendation 11 the use of antibiotics among women with a vaginal delivery and a third or fourth degree perineal tear is recommendation for the prevention of wound complications psychological support is 12 recommendation psychological uh, support by a trained person is recommended for the prevention of postpartum depression among women at a high risk of developing this condition kangaroo mother care Every year more than 20 million infants are born weighing less than 2.5 kg over 96% of them in developing countries these low birth weight infants are at increased risk of early growth retardation infectious diseases developmental delay and uh, uh, death during infancy and childhood evidence suggests that kangaroo mother care is a safe and effective alternative to conventional neonatal care especially in under resourced uh, settings and may reduce morbidity and mortality in low birth weight infants as well as uh, increased breastfeeding kangaroo mother care involves early continuous and prolonged skin to skin contact between a mother and her newborn frequent and exclusive breastfeeding early discharge from hospital wg recommendation of uh, kangaroo mother care it is recommended for the routine care of newborns that are being a uh, 2000 gram or less at birth and should be initiated in healthcare facilities as soon as the newborns are clinically stable newborns being a 2000 gram or less at birth should be provided as close 
to the continuous uh, kangaroo mother care as possible. Intermittent kangaroo mother care rather than conventional care is recommended for newborns being um, 2,000 gram or less at birth if continuous kangaroo mother care is not possible. Benefits of kangaroo care to baby. Stabilizing your baby's heart rate improves your baby's breathing pattern and making the breathing more regular, improving oxygen saturation level, um, gaining in sleep time, experiencing more rapid weight gain, decreasing crying, having more successful breastfeeding episodes, having an earlier hospital discharge, improving bonding with the baby and feeling of closeness, increasing your breast milk supply, increasing the confidence and the ability to care for the newborn, increasing the confidence that baby is well cared for, increasing the sense of control. Now recent updates. WHO recommendation for breastfeeding uh, mothers for COVID-19. WHO's current uh, guidance is that women with COVID-19 can breastfeed if they wish to do so, but they should uh, take precautions, including uh, practicing respiratory hygiene during feeding, including wearing a mask or covering mouth and nose, washing hands with soap and water for 20 seconds before and after touching the baby. Uh, routinely cleaning and disinfecting surfaces they have touched. Another article published is prevalence of postpartum depression, uh, depression and interventions that are utilized for its management. Best management for postpartum depression. It is a descriptive cross-sectional study design using a quantitative approach. Um, the study population includes mothers and healthcare workers. Postpartum depression was prevalent among 7% of all mothers selected. The severity ranged from minimal depression to severe depression. The most common interventions used in the management of postpartum depression among respondents were psychological support, professionally based postpartum home visits, interpersonal psychotherapy, and cognitive therapy. Psychological support proved to be the most effective intervention that has been used by the healthcare workers to reduce depressive symptoms. Postnatal care pre-discharge uh, post and checklist. This point of postnatal care pre-discharge checklist and wall post is intended uh, for use by the healthcare providers, educators, and other postnatal care stakeholders. Originally published it was in the 2016, the postnatal care checklist and posters has been updated to include recent clinical recommendations. Uh, this shows the link after birth, all mothers and newborns need to stay in the facility for at least 24 hours to receive necessary health checks, counseling and care before discharge. Low utilization of postnatal care, searching the window of opportunity to save mothers and newborns lives in Islamabad capital territory in Pakistan. Uh, many countries have still a high rate of maternal mortality ratio uh, and the timing of maternal deaths is uh, clustered around labor, delivery and immediate postpartum period extremely high on the first and second day after birth. According to Pakistan's Demographic and Health Survey 2012-13 to report, about 73% of women are seeking uh, antenatal care. Around 60% of women received postnatal care for their last birth uh, given the first two days following delivery. However, second day onward, the percentage of women uh, seeking this care declines significantly. This was a descriptive cross-sectional study carried out in the four union councils of Islamabad capital territory to understand the determinants of post-natal health care seeking. The study sample comprises 225 postpartum women with a child zero to one month of age and the health care providers for both public and private sector. Only 30% of the women received postnatal care, amongst which of 68% uh, went to a government health facility. According to health service providers, 90% women are not interested in postnatal care. And this is because they lack awareness, face mobility, transportation issues, and cannot afford the cost of health care. Uh, besides many other determinants, women's education was significantly associated with postnatal care utilization. Now coming towards the multiple choice questions. First MCQ is, um, 
Mrs. Ali delivered a first baby through cesarean section. After six hours of the section, uh, she developed sudden headache, blurring of vision, epigastric pain, convulsions. What will be the diagnosis of her presentation? Option A, postpartum depression. Option B, perpural sepsis. Option C, eclampsia. And option D, postpartum hemorrhage. A. Alpha. A. Alpha, alpha. Postpartum depression. Uh, this is eclampsia because there are convulsions and uh, blurring of vision. All, uh, all these uh, blurring of vision and headache can be considered as depressive disorders, but uh, having convulsions is a part of eclampsia. Second MCQ is a woman, ABC resident of a village, gave birth to a baby at home in setting with high infant mortality. Which of the following is recommended for the first week of his life? Option A, store hexidine. Option B, wash and cover pot. Option D, fusidine cream. And option D, ethyl alcohol. Alpha? A. Alpha. Yes, A is the right answer. Third option, uh, MCQ is a young lady after delivering a baby develops severe mood swings. Excessive crying, loss of appetite, insomnia, and difficult bonding with the baby. Which of the following intervention has been proved to be most effective in uh, for this condition? Option A, psychological uh, psychosocial support. Option B, postpartum home visits. Option uh, C is interpersonal psychotherapy. And option D, cognitive therapy. A, Charlie? Charlie? Uh, option A is the right one. Psychosocial support is the most effective. Fourth MCQ is a baby was delivered, uh, gaining about uh, a weight of 1.8 kg and vitally stable. He was put on his mother's chest by the lady health worker right after the delivery. The benefits of kangaroo mother care are all uh, other than option A, breastfeeding, option B, thermal control, option C, cord care, and option D, early discharge. C, cord care. C? C. C is the right one. It's called K. Uh, MCQ number five is kangaroo mother care is a simple method of the care for infants that includes early and prolonged skin to skin contact with their mothers. Which babies are eligible for, for kangaroo mother care? Option A is very sick babies. Option B, all low birth uh, weight babies. Option C is all lo all stable low birth weight babies, and option D is all newborn babies. C Charlie. Uh, Charlie. Yes, option C is the right one. All stable low birth ba weight babies are eligible. Six MCQ is the mother exclusively breastfeeding her four months baby developed fever. Cough, shortness of breath, loss of taste, and smell. She was then diagnosed with COVID-19. What are the WHO recommendations in this case? Option A, to stop breastfeeding and start giving baby complementary food. Option B, to stop breastfeeding and st start bottle feeding. Option C, to continue breastfeeding with precautions. And option D, to continue breastfeeding without precautions. C, C Charlie. C. Option C. Yes, C is the right one. MCQ7 is postpartum blues, also referred to as baby blues, is the most common type of uh, postpartum mood disturbances occurring in approximately 70 to 85 percent of all new mothers. Its onset is usually shortly after birth and it generally resolves within uh, how many days? Option A, 3 days, uh, 10 days, C, 30 days, and option D, 15 days. B. Option B is the right one. Mostly it resolves within 10 days. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Salim were called by the gynecologist after a delivery of the baby to adopt a suitable method for next birth. Uh, which of the following method is not recommended in postpartum period? Option A, intrauterine device. Option B, non-hormonal contraceptives. Option C, combined oral pills. And option D, medroxyprogesterone acetate. A, alpha? Alpha? 
uh, option C is the right one. Combined oral pills should not be used immediately in that period. Ninth MCQ is uh, soon after delivery. The health checkups of the mothers must be frequent till the end of six weeks. Which of the following is necessary to examine by the end of six weeks? Option A, fundal light. Option B, stitch line. Option C, hemoglobin level. And option D, uh, A, fundal height. A, alpha. Fundal height. This option A is the right one, fundal height. Tenth MCQ is the primary gravida delivered a healthy baby through a spontaneous vaginal delivery. After six hours, she developed excessive pre-vaginal bleeding, uh, leading to shock. What could be the possible cause for her um, postpartum hemorrhage? Option A, re retained placenta or membranes. Option B, anticoagulants taken during pregnancy. Option C, bleeding disorder. Option D, perineal tears. C, bleeding disorder. Delta? Alpha. Yes, option A is the right one. Retained percent or the membranes are the most common cause for postpartum hemorrhage. Uh, this is the key and thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Isma. Very